Hello, everyone, and welcome to English with Boss Huang Vlogs. I'm Boss, and today I will be giving you nine tips to make English learning a habit in your daily life, to the point that you will be learning English every day and practicing it without even noticing. Before beginning today's video, 98.5% of my viewers are not subscribed to my channel. So if you're not subscribed yet, please consider doing so. Not only will it support me as a creator, it will also help you stay up to date to my future English tutorials and other content. Now, without further ado, let's go into today's nine tips to help you make English learning a day-to-day -day habit. Tip number one is to do things in English. To do things in English. We do so many things every day, and we tend to do it however we think is the most comfortable. And generally speaking, that would be in our native language. Take reading the news, surfing the internet, going to work, and watching videos as an example. We will usually stay in our comfort zone and look for creators or content that we're familiar with. However, if you want to make learning English a habit, you want to try and mix it up, or even completely change your lifestyle into doing things in English. For example, if you're someone that watches the news every day, you might want to try to instead of always looking at news platforms in your own language, you might want to add some parts of a foreign news that provides their content in English. You could also try and completely. Change your news sources to an American or international platform that provides their news in English. By doing so, if you're a beginner, you can mix it up and watch news for both languages, so that you still have the news from your own native language, and so you don't feel so unaccustomed to the English language. And by doing so, you won't have the pressure of completely not understanding. The English news. Aside from reading the news in English, if you're someone that watches videos or movies and TV shows, you can try to watch it in your native language with English subtitles. If you're a beginner, if you are slightly more advanced, or if you want to take a deep dive into learning the language, I would recommend you switch the vocals into English. And if you can watch it with English subtitles as well, the reason I would recommend you listen and watch both English vocals and subtitles is because sometimes different languages have different sentence structure and grammar. So if you watch the movie in English but you have a subtitle in a different language and you try to translate that in your head. The sentence structure or grammar might be weird or not logical, and that's why I would recommend you, if you want to start off without so much difficulty, you can watch it in your own language using English subtitles to understand the different words. As I have said constantly in the past videos, we want to expand our database of words, and once your database of words is ready, you can take a deep dive. And watch these movies and TV shows, both in English pronunciation and English subtitles. By doing so, you are slowly ramping up the difficulty to the point that you are able to understand this movie or TV show without subtitles and pronounced in English. So these are some of the examples of doing something in English from day to day life: reading the news or watching videos. If you're searching the web, trying to buy different things from online shopping websites, or if you like to read different blogs or forums, you can also try to change your website settings to English if they provide the setting. Also, you can consider changing the language interface of your electronics into English. This is one of the best ways to immerse yourself in an English environment because nowadays so many of us, if not all of us, use electronic devices. 
I am sure you're watching this video currently on a phone or computer or some other electronic device as well. So if you change your user interface into English or whatever language you're trying to learn, you will force yourself to try and understand what's shown on your phone or your screen of the electronic device. And so those are the three examples for doing different things in English. If you have any other ideas or if you think of any other things you or fellow viewers can do, you are welcome to put it in the comments below so that we can start a discussion on what we can do in English every day. Moving on to tip number two is to start small. So there's a Taiwanese saying that goes, boy. Uh, translated to English is someone that wants to fly before learning how to walk. So this idiom is trying to say you should always start small and of course learn to walk before you even try flying. Because if we go too deep into this learning process and we increase the difficulty by too much, we will have learner's fatigue. And learner's fatigue is when we are given too much information that our brain can't process in time. So that our brain will be feeling like there's just too much work coming in, but not enough knowledge is actually being processed and remembered inside your brain. It's like listening from your right ear and going out from your left ear. And that's why we want to take bite-sized pieces of learning so that we are able to digest what we listen, what we see, and what we learn. So for example, if you want to try to learn by watching the news, but you're a very new beginner, you might want to start with news platforms that provide full transcripts in your language. Full transcripts in your language will allow you to follow the video or follow the news content word for word as they go into the video or as they speak. After you understand these words in English, you can try to switch them to English transcripts so that you can get a hang of their language structure and grammar. And after that, through these English transcripts, you can also learn the terminologies used in the news platforms. Terminologies are words that are specially used for certain professions or certain criteria. Aside from news platforms, if you want to watch videos, you should also start with content creators that provide English subtitles. Because if you have two different ways of receiving the information, both from reading the subtitles and hearing the content creator talk, then it will be easier for you to follow on to what's going on in the video. If there wasn't subtitles and this content creator was speaking very fast, you probably wouldn't be able to understand them if you are still a beginner. And that's why it's so important to start small and make sure your brain is able to keep up with what you're trying to give. As long as the information you give your brain is enough for it to process, your brain will have a great time learning. If you give it too much and your brain rejects it, just take a step back slow down and rethink what you want to use to continue your English learning habits. So that's the point of starting small. Moving on to the next tip, we have creating a habit. Creating a habit. A habit is something you are so used to doing that you usually do it without even thinking about it. So to create a habit, the best way is to use collocation. Collocation. Collocation in linguistics is when two words are usually placed together. In other terms, it can also be used for different things that are placed together and related to each other. The point of collocation is to incorporate something you want to become a new habit into something that you already do every day. For example, all of us will definitely eat every day. So for me personally, when I want to learn something, I will usually play a video on that topic or read a certain report on that topic while I'm eating. Because for me, when I'm eating, 
I still have my eyes and ears. I still have my eyes and ears which are open to receive other information. However, if you want to do this, you want to make sure that you are putting equal amounts of effort into both of the things you are doing. And you want to make sure that you don't overdo the multitasking, which is when you do more than one thing at a time to the point that you can't focus. If you're not someone that is good at concentration, then you will probably be better off concentrating on one subject at one time. If you try to eat and learn at the same time, you might accidentally drop your food on the table. So if you are not a good multitasker, what can you do to incorporate new things into your old habits? Let's say you're someone that likes to read. Depending on what you are currently reading, for example, if you like to read romance novels in your own language, you can try to read different romance novels that are provided in English. You're still doing your hobby of reading, you're just reading in a different language. The process of doing something you like, reading, will give more motivation so that you're more accepting to reading in English. By doing so, you can do something you like while learning the thing you want to learn. Aside from learning while eating, you could also do it before sleeping, on the way to work or school, while you are brushing your teeth, or if you have a waterproof phone, you can definitely bring it into the shower and maybe play a podcast or some English music in the background. So that's the point of creating a new habit by collocation and incorporating the concepts that you want to add into your habits and then do it through your pre-existing habits. Now, let's say if you have a bad habit and you want to remove it or replace it with a good habit. Personally, for me, one of the biggest bad habits that stays in the way of language learning or learning in general is procrastination. Procrastination is when you don't want to do something, so you decide to wait on it a little to do something else first. However, I'm sure most of us know that procrastination never ends well. We usually think that we're going to take a five minute break, but this five minute break quickly becomes one hour, one hour becomes two, and magically we've missed the deadline for our learning schedule. Personally, for me, the biggest counter for procrastination is to set a schedule to live by. A schedule to live by. A schedule is something that gives you the time and what you should be doing at this time. It can also be a checklist that you check off every day or every week, like a to-do list. By setting a schedule, you will be reminded at the certain times to do what you originally planned to do. By sticking to this schedule, you will be able to be more efficient and procrastinate less. So that for me is one of the biggest bad habits and also the solution I found that helps me remove this bad habit and make it into more of a routine to help me in my language learning goals. Are there any good habits you want to incorporate into your language learning journey? Or is there any bad habits that you want to remove? Leave it in the comment section below and we can start a discussion on how to help you remove or incorporate your different concepts into your language learning process. So that's the point of creating a habit that you live by. Next up, we have do it daily. Do it daily. The reason I think it's so important to do things daily and not weekly or monthly where you do it once every week or once every month is because, as we said before, we want this English learning process as much of a routine as we can. So if we want it to be a routine, the best way is to do it every day so that our mind and body will get used to doing this thing at this time every day. If we were to set it as a weekly goal or a monthly goal, we might forget to do it 
or we might forget what we learned last week or last month, the last time we did it, and that will stop us from progressing in our language learning goals. So I would recommend to you to do small goals every day, for example, reading an English book before sleep, or reading English news when you wake up, or watching an English video on your way to work, or after work, or on your way to school and after school. If you want to have bigger goals or bigger challenges for yourself, like taking a test or watching a certain movie without subtitles, or maybe you want to memorize a certain amount of vocabularies in one single day. These goals that take more effort can be set as a weekly or monthly goal, as long as you make sure that you have smaller bite-sized chunks, as we said before, every day, so that you are constantly reminded to learn, learn, and also to repeat, as we said in the last video. If you didn't see the last video or would like to watch different videos from my English learning tutorial, you can go to the cards above or the description below. So that's the point of doing it daily so that you are reminded to learn this English language or to do whatever you are doing and you will also be somewhat motivated to continue because you're doing this every day until it becomes a habit. The next point is to join English communities. To join English communities. So one of the best way to learn and practice a language is to immerse yourself in an environment filled with that language. So the best way is to join an English communities. What kind of English communities, you ask? Well, for example, if you want to go in person, you can look for international students on university campuses. There are many exchange students in different university campuses and Taiwan has a vast majority of international students from all over the world. So that is one of the greatest ways to learn English in person on a low budget. All you have to do is go to a local university, make some foreign friends, and become their local guide. You can take them around your country for free, and they can teach you English in return also for free. If you are not living near a university, or if you prefer doing things online over the internet, you can also join language learning platforms or apps. These language learning platforms and applications are designated for you to learn English in this community of different language learners. However, you want to take care that you don't become addicted and make this into a chatting platform instead of learning. And that's why I would recommend platforms or applications specifically designed for language learning so that everyone has a common goal of learning something here and it doesn't become overly casual and makes you procrastinate. Moving on to the next tip is to notice English in our daily lives. To notice English in our daily lives. Observation is a very important skill and sometimes in our busy urban lives we forget to slow down and look at the things that are around us. Aside from observing the English in our daily lives, sometimes it is great to just slow down your pace and enjoy the world that is around you. Look at the trees in the park, look at the people who are there, and try to think about what brings us all together in this world. Now back to the point of observing the English things in our daily lives. For example, if you go to a public transport station, you can look for different languages and certainly I'm sure there will be some places that provide many different languages for international tourists. You can try to pick up an English introduction or try to read the English words on the signboards and try to understand what they're saying. The advantage to this is that because it's designed for international tourists, it will definitely be provided in multiple languages. So if you think you are still beginning and would like to see translations, 
Just pick up the flyer or the introduction in your own language and English. Free translation, neat, huh? Aside from these tourism hotspots, you can also do it in local places. For example, if you go to a shop and they have different books, if they have an English book, you might want to take it and try to look inside of it and read it. Not only are you trying to understand what the book says, you can even take a step further and think about why it is there in the store. Why did the owner put it there? Maybe you can initiate a conversation on this book with the owner and you might just become friends. You can also do the same thing in your friends or family's houses. If they like books or if they have a reading room, you can go looking around trying to look for different books you like or different language books that you want to learn and try to discuss with them on this topic. You never know, you might just find an English professional or an English master amongst your friends. That's the point of noticing English in daily lives. Try to look actively for English in the places that you go, in the things that you hear, and the things that you see. By doing so, not only are we taking a step back, slowing down, and observing the world around us, we're also becoming a more active listener to the environment around us. That is also a very important skill to have amongst our friends when they are in need. But that is a topic for another day, so moving on. The next tip is to reward yourself. To give yourself encouragement or even gifts after you reach certain milestones. Achieving a goal gives us dopamine, which is a naturally produced chemical that makes us continue to do the same thing. Because when we succeed it, our body gives us dopamine and that gives us motivation. So if you reward yourself with certain milestones, you will feel even more dopamine coming in and that will push you even further into your language learning goals. For example, when I was a child in elementary school, when I started reading novels, I had this book where I would keep track of what books, what novels that I read, what the novel is about, and also the number of pages in this novel. And the ultimate goal was to get to 10,000 pages, and I had a deal with my parents if I got to 10,000 pages, they would take me to a buffet, and that's also why I look like this, because I love to eat, and I also succeeded in my language learning goals. So within a short time, I managed to finish this roughly 35 novels, and they brought me to have that buffet. That buffet gave me a lot of motivation and was a big achievement for me, because 10,000 sounded like a big number for me. But I succeeded in that goal, so I believed in myself to be able to do more than 10,000 and then I started to add on to that number and moving on I started to do different goals and different milestones. So I would definitely recommend you give yourself something you like when you reach certain milestones. For example, if you're trying to understand the news, you might want to give yourself a milestone where you're able to understand a full report without any subtitles or translations. If you want to watch a movie, you might reward yourself when you are able to watch the movie without subtitles in full English pronunciation. By doing so, you will give yourself more dopamine which will motivate you to continue in doing your language learning goals and this will become a great habit of yours. If you have friends and family around you that are also trying to learn something, you can do the same by constantly encouraging them or telling them that you are doing a good job. You are doing a good job. I'm sure you are too since you're watching this video trying to enhance your language learning skills. So good job to you and I hope you do well in your studies. So that's the point of rewarding yourself to give yourself more motivation and especially when you're thinking that this process is so hard, you really need that encouragement to push on. So the next part is to change your mindset. To change your mindset. A lot of us, when we are encountered with different difficulties or even different setbacks, 
we might be pessimistic and think that I can't do this. This is too hard. I should just give up. But you hear the keyboard. But sometimes when this happens, we should change our mindset. So if you're an English learner, you will know that but means to say that the behind of the sentence and the front of the sentence mean different things. So sometimes when you're thinking pessimistically, thinking this is so hard, I should give up. This time you should put in a but or a yet. These two words mean the same thing, have the same uses, and they can turn a situation around. Sometimes, as a child, like the example I just gave of reading ten thousand pages throughout a book, if this book was something that was more dull or on a more serious topic, I would think to myself, "This book is too thick. It has too many pages. I should just quit reading, or maybe read a different book." But at this time, I will tell myself. It is very hard, but I already read how many pages, and there's only so many pages left. So I should continue and finish this book so that I can put it into my booklet of completed books. By doing so, not only are you giving yourself more confidence, you're also using a great way to push back the discouragements and the negative thoughts in your head. So if you think that language learning is so hard, And you're on the brink of giving up. Just remember, it is hard, but you're doing your best. So continue, and I'm sure you will achieve your goals. So those are the nine tips for today of nine things you can do in daily life to make English learning a habit of day-to-day -day life. I hope you enjoyed, and if you had a favorite tip, please comment below and let me know which one you will be using in your daily life. To continue your language learning goals, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, sharing, turning on notifications, liking, and commenting below. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope it will help you on your language learning journey. If you would like more information and other English learning tutorials, click the cards above and the description below. Good luck on your journey of learning English, and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye bye.